You all right? Now, my dear uh, brother, Minister uh, Ishmael, you really taught my subject this morning in five minutes, and I'll probably have to learn how to do that <laughs> from you. <laughs> I'm not going to keep you long, but I, I am excited by the vision. Now, beloved brothers and sisters, listen. After the thought brings up a concept you've conceived, most people talk the thought. And the thought gets lost. It's like showing the baby before the baby is a baby. Who wants to see a clot but an abortionist? <laughs> and most times we get a thought, we speak it before we think on the thought. Get it developed. And it must develop in darkness like the womb of the female, the womb of the mind. Develop your ideas. Then develop the method, the plan of execution. Hmm? The idea will bring up a picture of the completed thing. The picture is in your brain. You can draw it on a piece of paper so that you can keep the vision before your eyes. But putting it on paper isn't actualizing the vision. The vision is only actualized when you bring it into concrete reality. How do you bring it into concrete reality? First, without faith, you can't work the vision. Even if you see it, you got to now believe that you can bring it. Believe. Not only believe in God, but believe in yourself. Believe that you can do what you envision that must be done. But belief alone is not of any value unless belief is translated into practice or work. And it is belief joined by work that concretizes vision. Now, my subject today is belief in Allah. Belief in Allah. What is the problem with our lack of productivity. What is the problem with our lack of doing great exploits? Why haven't we conquered the country already after 60 years of having the Word of God in our midst? What has slowed us down? It is lack of belief in Allah. Most of you believe in what you can see, especially you college people. No, I want you to talk to you college people. Because college people generally don't accomplish much. 
Farrakhan, please. I'm not knocking that wonderful degree that you have or are striving for. But beloved family, look, college was never set up so that you could be set up with the needs of a people. College just wasn't up for that. College was set up to train you to think in a certain way that would be beneficial to the architects of the philosophy that guides education. When I was uh, with Barbara Walters, Barbara said to me, or Miss Walters rather, we, we didn't get on a first name basis. Um, Miss Walters said, a Mr. Walter Annenberg had donated 50 million dollars to education and she wanted me to acknowledge the tremendous gift of 50 million dollars to education and if you didn't have the power of discernment you might say what, what a wonderful thing Oh, $50 million. But what is $50 million to preserve your power and control over your world? If I spend $50 million on an education that trains the populace according to a certain idea, Idea that I am at the root of and am the prime beneficiary of. Then you can't say I am a philanthropist. I am a realist who sees my world coming down because my idea is being challenged. So I want to sink more money into making more slaves to my idea. educated brothers and sisters when we are educated by our former slave masters their idea is for you to envision their world take their vision for your sight then use the faculties of your mind, your intelligence, your gifts to support that vision that their education brings up in your mind and it makes you a slave to their world. What is their world? Their world is governments, nations, systems, education, jurisprudence, social system, political system, economic system. So they lock us in to their world so that your talents, your gifts build their world, support their vision, uphold their ideas at the expense of your own suffering people and for upholding their ideas and their vision they give you a salary well they should give you something for betraying yourself and the desires of your own people you ought to be paid well for that
So you say, I have a $50,000 a year job doing what? Upholding a vision that is not yours. Lending yourself to an idea that at the root of it is the supremacy of white people over all dark people on the earth. Nothing but the truth, brother. Whether you are a doctor, a lawyer, a teacher, an engineer, a chemist, a social scientist, a psychologist, a carpenter, a plumber, an architect, your skills are utilized in the world to promote their vision. So when you see brothers and sisters on television selling products, you say, isn't it wonderful? Look at Michael Jordan selling Nike and getting millions of dollars. For who? He ain't building nothing for you. He not even thinking about building a world He's thinking about how well he fits into the world of his oppressors. And you admire the way he fits because you have no vision. You are a spiritually blind, deaf and dumb people. You need Jesus to give you sight again. It's true. Whoever you admire in the political sphere, whose world is this? They ain't politicking in their world. I'm State Representative so-and-so. I'm running for mayor. I'm running for governor. Governor of what? Governor? We had our first black governor in Governor Wilder. He's a wonderful brother, a brilliant man. But governor of what? Of your world? Of his vision? of his reality. No! No! He's working to uphold their vision. We've had wonderful mayors in Atlanta, Georgia. Mayor Maynard Jackson. The Reverend um, Oh, what is it? Andrew Young. These two wonderful mayors have made Atlanta into a world-class city. We applaud them, but they built on a vision that is fulfilling the vision of white people for black people in Atlanta are going backward, not forward. We had Mayor Washington here. He did a good job. But look at the condition that black people live under. Where's your vision? Who is going to see for your black self? Your leaders are blind. Your leaders are bankrupt. Your preachers have no vision.